Do you work in a regulated industry like healthcare? Maybe you have workloads that are expected to meet certain compliance requirements, like payment processing. If that's the case, then we have a tool to help you deploy into these environments with the necessary regulatory compliance built in. Hi there, my name is Eric, the IT Guy Hendricks. I'm an operations advocate here at Red Hat. And on this RHEL Tech Tip, we're gonna talk about security compliant builds with Image Builder. If you're new to Image Builder, that's not a problem. I wanna give you five simple steps for getting started. First, you need to choose a runtime environment. Whether you're deploying to bare metal, virtual machines in a private cloud like VMware or OpenStack, or maybe you're deploying to a public cloud, maybe multiple public clouds, or maybe you even have workloads all the way out to the edge. No matter where you're deploying, Image Builder can meet you right where you are. Step two, we also have multiple ways of using Image Builder, whether it's the Composer CLI, Composer being the upstream to Image Builder, the web console, or our hosted experience with Red Hat Insights at console.redhat.com. No matter where you're deploying from, it's virtually the same experience. Next, we're gonna create a blueprint. This blueprint is kind of like a recipe. You just list out your packages, you define a couple of users, you enable this service, you disable that firewall port, and before you know it, you have a golden image. Basically, this is the, this is the standard for your entire enterprise to deploy from. And that brings us to step four building the image. We've got QCOW2 files, VMDKs, Amazon AMIs, and a whole host of others. And of course, we didn't forget, you can create your own custom installer and write it to an ISO. Once you've defined and built your image, now you can use that as the basis to deploy your instances. These are going to be the actual servers, whether they're physical or virtual or an edge device that's actually going to run your workloads. Depending on your workload or your industry, it may not be enough to just define a standard image. You may have some security requirements, some compliance baselines that you have to meet. That's where tools like CIS Benchmarks, the Center for Internet Security, or PCI DSS comes into play for payment card data. There's different certifications and Red Hat Enterprise Linux strives to meet as many of those requirements as possible. So if you're in one of these industries or if you run a, a protected workload, you might be familiar with some of, the, some of the profiles that we're going to see in our example. If you work in a regulated industry or you administer a protected workload, you're probably familiar with the compliance and audit process that goes with a lot of these baselines. That's why Red Hat works so hard to make sure that we meet as many requirements across as many baselines as often as we can. But beyond that, we use the upstream OpenSCAP workbench to create tailored profiles for those specific requirements and provide you tools to audit and apply changes, as we'll see here in just a second. But one last caveat to remember is these are baselines. They'll likely need to be adjusted based on your workload, based on your environment, based on the industry and government regulations that are in place in your area. So definitely take a look at the security requirements for your workload before you start this process. Now, with my service compliance announcement out of the way, let's take a look. What you're seeing here is my web console, also known as the Upstream Cockpit Project for a vanilla RHEL 9 virtual machine. We're going to be bouncing back and forth between the terminal and the UI, so let's just use the built-in terminal. I've gone ahead and logged in as the root user just to make things easier. First, we'll need to ensure that Image Builder is installed and configured on our system. That is the Composer and Composer CLI commands. We'll also want to add the OpenSCAP tools that provide us with the needed profiles. Once you have those packages installed, add your user to the Welder group. I'm just using my Ansible service account here as an example. Next, let's enable the web console and image builder services. We'll use the tac tac now so they start on boot and start now. Then ensure that the needed firewall ports are open. Since I'm using the web console already, the ports are confirmed to be open. Do you like using tab completions on your commands? You'll be happy to know that Composer has auto completion. Let's go ahead and source the config file. Then run the status command to make sure everything is configured correctly. Now, we need to pick a compliance profile. If you look inside the user share directory, you can see what profiles are available for this version of your operating system. There's quite a few of them, so let's pick one of the more common ones, the CIS Server Benchmark Level 2. We'll also want to remember this profile ID as it will come into play in just a minute. Now let's get some additional information on our chosen profile and read up on the description. After that, we're going to actually generate our image builder blueprint. We're going to use the OpenSCAP command to generate a CIS profile. 
We want a blueprint as the file type, and we'll write out that blueprint into a TOML file. If we take a look at that file using our preferred text editor, we can see how easy it is to see what the image will look like when it's done. We've got a file system defined, number of packages to be installed, and some services that should be either enabled or disabled. For the sake of this example, let's go ahead and add the Vim Enhanced package to our blueprint. Once we save our blueprint, we can push it into the image builder using the composer CLI command. Now, we could go ahead and use the command line to generate the image, but let's see how our new blueprint looks inside the web UI. Let's click on image builder under apps. You can see our CIS L2 blueprint, and sure enough, there's the services that we defined, along with the file system layout, as well as a bunch of additional settings we can add later. Now, if we look under packages, we can see several already defined, including our Vim enhanced package. All this looks good, so let's create an image. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, OpenStack, and a number of other platforms use a QCOW2 format, so let's generate one. This process can take from 10 to 20 minutes, depending on your network connection and system resources. Thanks to the beauty of post-editing, ours comes back in a flash. <laughs> With our image successfully built off of our blueprint, we can download it or copy it to the host system we want to launch. I went ahead and created a VM off of our blueprint in one of my cloud accounts. Before we can take a look at our compliance profile, first we need to register our new system with Red Hat and with Red Hat Insights. We can do that using the RHC command, the Red Hat Connector Utility. You can use activation keys or a username and password. Once registered, we can navigate to the hybrid cloud console at console.redhat.com. Here's where Red Hat Insights lives. Let's click on RHEL and from our left-hand menu, go to Security, SCAP Profiles. You'll see we don't have any policies set up, so let's create one. We based our blueprint on RHEL 9, so we'll select that here. Now, we'll see a number of policies that are available for 9. Let's filter down and select CIS Server Level 2. This gives us a field to define the purpose of this role. Maybe you give it the name of an environment or a workload, something that tells you why you have this policy. Now, no production system is perfect. There'll pretty much always be exceptions. So many compliance organizations expect about a 95% or better in any audit. So we'll set that as our target here. On the next screen, let's select our newly registered REL 9 system. Now we can see why that compliance percentage was so important. For CIS level two, there are over 300 rules a system must pass. Let's go ahead and select all for now and create our report. If we go to our registered system, we'll see that, uh-oh, there's no data. <laughs> That's because we haven't told our client system that it needs to report its compliance status to Red Hat Insights. Let's jump back over to our RHEL 9 system real quick. We'll run the Insights client command with the compliance option. This will report back to Red Hat Insights based on the profile this system has now been assigned to. Now we can refresh our compliance page and bingo. Notice that our system is compliant, over 96%. That's not bad. There are a few configurations that need to be tweaked. And as Image Builder becomes more robust, we'll see more of these configurations meet these rules out of the box. From here, you can create a remediation plan, which is basically an Ansible playbook that you can run on the local system, or kick it off right here from the Insights console. You could also go rule by rule and adjust the failing rules manually, but who wants to do that? Now, rule remediation is a little bit outside the scope of today's demonstration, but I'm not gonna leave you hanging. In fact, our team has a Red Hat Insights mini series right here on this channel. And two of my buddies, Nate and John, actually went in deep on the compliance topic. And I'll put a link to that episode in the show notes below. In fact, if you're interested in additional content, we publish tech tips like this all the time. If there's a topic that you see that you like, let us know in the comments. Or if you want to get in deeper, we actually have a couple of live shows that I think you might enjoy. Every other Wednesday, we're live with Red Hat Enterprise Linux Presents. We take a look at industry topics, we look at RHEL as a product, and we get in deep into topics like a day in the life of a systems administrator, or what it's like to be a kernel engineer. If the hands-on approach is more your style, grab your lunch in a terminal, because every Friday we're live at noon Eastern on Into the Terminal. We take topics like user creation, systemd service management, and much, much more, where we take 30 minutes in the terminal to learn something new. It's a great way to spend your lunch. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you in the next Tech Tip.